let's make a lidded vessel. I hope everybody's having a good week. Uh, so this is something that I haven't really done uh, a whole lot of on the channel. So I thought I would cover it this week. Let it box, let it vessel, let it container. And I always like to round things on the bandsaw before I go to the lathe. It's just faster, quicker. Yeah, so we've got the body mounted between centers here and just lining things up. So it's balanced nice. Again, using the 5 8 bowl gouge by David Ellsworth. Pretty, pretty grain. So I'm just going to cut in a 10 in here. That's how I plan on holding this to do the inside. And that's a go no go gauge for uh, tenon size to make sure that it's going to work. And I just use a 3 16 parting tool to uh, cut in that tenon so it's nice and crisp. So this is the lid. Same sort of idea. Yeah, I plan on grabbing this with a strong hold chuck as well. It's important that the uh, tenon is nice and crisp, and that's where the parting tool comes in. Pretty wild looking grain. So that was on the inboard. Now I'm moving to the outboard and to the lathe, and that's because I'm left-handed. I get asked that a ton of questions. Uh, that's why I like to turn on the outboard end because I'm left-handed. So you're just shaping the the, uh, the bottom here, and I see some areas that uh, aren't exactly the best. So I'm going to fill them with the thin CA glue from Starbond, and then use the accelerator. And then just trim that up to see what we got. This surprisingly had a, a bunch of uh, voids in it. And again, this is poplar. I guess I never mentioned that. This is a poplar crotch. At this point, I'm just feeling my way around and trying to come up with a, a design that I'm happy with. Shear cuts. Yeah, so I noticed that there's a bunch of um, voids on the outside of this. So I thought that I would move away, get rid of most of the material here before um, I do any inlay work on it. Again, sharp tools, very important here to get a nice clean cut.
And of course, measuring wall thickness is always important. So I'm going to use this Typhoon bit. I've uh, shown this a lot on my channel in the past. It does a good job removing uh, material pretty fast, actually. And when I'm grinding out these areas to be inlaid, I'm not always necessarily going for a perfect shape. Uh, sometimes I'll leave them kind of really rustic and just punch it out the way that it is inside. I could round it off and make, try and make a circle, but uh, I prefer a more natural look. Okay, so we're looking at the bowl of the chuck. Um, I didn't even know these voids were in there. So anyway, now we have to address that. And of course, if you're new here to my channel, um, I use a lot of this soapstone. So that's what this is, crushed soapstone. Uh, check out the videos that are on there to show you how that's all made. But anyway, it's gonna be hard to film this. But anyway, I'm gonna put some of the soapstone down in here, pour the, the thin CA glue, and you gotta use the thin stuff for these inlays. And then I'll set it with the accelerator and then put a little bit more in and, and build it out. That way, this will dry fast and I'll be able to get back on the lathe. Yeah, one thing to keep in mind when you're uh, using that thin CA is to, you know, don't spare it. You really want to saturate the inlay material and um, that way it's not going to fall on you. There, as you can see, the glue went all the way through. I meant to push that out, I don't know if you can see that or not. It's indented in. Anyway, uh, I'll have to cut this down a little, this radius down a little more. And I'm gonna throw some more CA on this. Yeah, I could, um, I could do some soapstone here too. But other than, um, I thought that this would be the area that would have the rod in it, but it wasn't. So there, I'll just go around this and hit any soft spots. I know that there's some here, and I'll hard them up with the CA glue. And then um, give this another 10 minutes or so to set, and then we'll go back on the lathe. So I went back and used the Typhoon bit and ground that out, so that way I can fill it to the level that I want to and not lose our, our curve that we have here. There, I think we're ready for the lathe. Yeah, so just get it mounted back up there and I'm cleaning off any um, any um, soapstone or CA glue that's proud of the surface. It'll be a lot easier to sand uh, if it's trimmed away. And this Ellsworth gouge has uh, no, no issues at all trimming that away. Stay sharp. It's not a huge inlay anyway. Yeah, so here I'm using the Easy Wood Tools finisher. 
I was having a little bit of issues down in the belly of that curve. So the, uh, the finisher was able to get in there and give me a clean cut. So these are the um, three and a half inch nipple discs. And I'm just showing how it wraps around the sanding pad so that you get in there and sand those difficult curved areas. They're absolutely ideal for that. And I'm sanding from 60 to 320. There, I see another area that needs to be filled. Sometimes these are really hard to spot until you start sanding. So out with the Typhoon bit again. I'm just using my little air, pow air powered sander. It does a good job cutting back that inlay material. Then I switch to the drill. So I'm just showing you that I uh, filled these again. And I believe this is the last filling. So I sand it to um, 320 and then filled them. And now I'm just going to Go back and take away any of the glue and blend it all in. Cutting in the lid right now, where I want the lid to sit anyway. You see, I don't know if you've seen me rotate the, uh, the parting tool. Sometimes it doesn't give you um, a good cut on one way because the burrs go in the other way. So then just flip it around and usually it cuts better. Okay, so if you've been here on my channel for a while, you know that I use uh, Wood Bowl Finish by General Finishes. Um, this, is, this is Sanding Sealer from Mylands. Uh, it's new to me. Now, this is Poplar and poplar tends to really yellow with the wood bowl finish or any urethane type finish like that so i want to use the sanding sealer and see if that helps to stop that yellowing i'm not sure if i'll go ahead with the wood bowl finish or not or if i'll just um, try something else maybe the ob shine juice might be might be this might be a good project for that so after i get the sealer on i'm going to use the Yorkshire grit, Yorkshire grit, and as you can see, it's brand new, still got the tape on it. So, again, this is a new product to me. So, anyway, I'm going to use this right out of the can, and uh, well, let's see what happens. I have heard that it dries really fast, and it's important to try and get it on as fast as you can. I have heard some people say that they thin this 50-50 with lacquer thinner. Anybody in there, are you doing that? I know one thing, you tend to lose a lot out of the friggin' can. I don't like the design of the can. Now we'll leave that for a bit and come back with the abrasive paste. First impressions, kind of looks like frozen coffee. If you've never worked with this before though, 
there's not really any smell. Again, I've never used abrasive paste. This is the first time ever, so... Let's see what happens. So we say to do this for a couple of minutes. And then pick up the lathe speed. Get a new paper towel and start cleaning it up. Yeah, still a little bit there. Clean. It's definitely smooth. All right, let's do the outside. Now I just sand it to 320 here. The instructions say to go to 400, but 320 is probably usually my normal sanding the highest that I'm going to sand on normal projects. You know, if it's resin, that's a different story, but this stuff, this kind of stuff, 320 is it. Well, it's smooth. There's no doubt about that. A lot of figuring there. Okay, so it's getting late in the day here and you know, I'm just gonna stick with my regular wood bowl finish uh, from General Finishes. Um, I don't typically use a sanding sealer on my on my wood because I want the wood bowl finish to penetrate uh, on the first coat. And so this is a different situation and we're trying to keep this from going yellow. Um, and But I'm, I'm kind of curious. I could have used a friction polish, but I think that I'll just stick with the general finishes and I'll see maybe one coat will do it with this sanding sealer. I don't know. But um, it's kind of a test to see if maybe in the future I might use uh, the sanding sealer and um, the sanding paste on my other work. And then maybe it'll limit how much uh, finish I end up using. Anyway, let's, uh, let's see what it does here. I know that it's not going to take as much as it usually would. This poplar would really, really suck up this finish. Sorry if I got my hand in the way. It's not a very big, uh, <laughs> not a very big thing to work on here. So yeah, I can tell that there's already a huge difference in color between just putting the wood bowl finish on and the steps that we've done before this. So that's that's encouraging. Yes, sir. You're not going to find too many pieces of wood like that. See you tomorrow. Okay, so it's the next day. Um, it does need another coat of the wood bowl finish. So I'm just going to use 4 steel wool uh, before I put the next coat on. 
and um, that's it. Ordinarily, this probably would have taken probably four coats. So that's good. I might even just wax this. It'll be something different for the channel. Okay, so I've decided to go with Shell Wax Cream. I use this on smaller stuff like on bottle stoppers and that kind of stuff. So I think it'd be good here. Try and get it on as fast as you can. So this is a friction polish, if you've never used it before. There, I think that'll do. Good. Yeah, so at this stage, you know, I, I'm still kind of winging it, if you will. Um, I know that it has to be a specific size for it to fit inside of the the body of the the dish or bowl or whatever you want to call it box but um as far as what we're going to deal with you know i'm still not totally sure or what what's the profile that i want i know that i want it to be sort of dome shaped so that's kind of where we're at now and of course more voids Typhoon bit again. Okay, so it's decision time. Now, I never wanted this lid to fit the outside of this box. I either wanted it recessed in the groove here or just out a little bit. And I'm thinking that that's the way I'm going to go with it. Give you an idea. There'll just be a little reveal here and this will sit down inside. Or do I put this right down inside and try and make it almost flush or maybe just a slightly domed inside the box? Uh, I think that I'm just going to cut that down a little bit there and then recess that in just the way it sits there. Um, it certainly won't be sitting as proud to the surface as this. Take about, I don't know, 3 sixteenths of an inch off anyway. Sit that down. What do you think? What would you have done? Anyway, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, so cutting uh, or parting in the lid 
is um, can be a little tricky. You just got to be, you know, go slow and take your time uh, because, uh, you know, once it comes off, it's, it's done. Can't put it back on. And again, sanded from 60 to 320. And I thought I'd just clean up those edges, take the sharpness away. Look at that flame. Poplar crotch. So yeah, I put the wood bowl finish on now. And again, 4 steel wall afterwards. Okay, so we got it out of the chuck. This is all good to go underneath here. Quite happy with that. And that's about the right fit that I'm looking for. It's got a little bit of slack in it. And I'll show you how I'm going to drill the hole here in a little bit. But um, that's essentially kind of the profile I'm looking for. We'll get rid of this tenon. And then we'll drill a small hole and then we'll put a, a finial in of some sort. I could maybe even get away with just leaving a little something to grab a hold of with this wood. But, you know, I think a dark wood on there would look nice. So I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Yeah, so here we are on the vacuum chuck. I uh, definitely love this vacuum chuck. It saves a lot of time. You can you can hold work and it doesn't score it up or mark it up in any way. Yeah, so here I'm using a couple pieces of Kleenex just to make sure that the lid fits uh, really tight inside there. And uh, this is electrical tape that'll hold it in place. Now, I could have left that on the vacuum chuck, but I figured I would show doing this because I, I realize that maybe a lot of you don't have a vacuum chuck. This is one way to do it. And I'm going with walnut for the handle knob slash finial. Calipers to measure the size of the hole. I want it to be a half inch and it wasn't very far off. So yeah, I'm using a little um, 3 eighths round skew there, if you're wondering what that is.
Yeah, so I'm using a tool called a skew gouge. Um, I bought it from Lee Valley Tools here in Canada. There's actually a link in the description if you want to get one. But it's uh, it does a good job getting into those little tight areas. There's no flutes, so it's just a, a flat grind. And then, uh, of course, the sharp tip. It works well. Yeah, so again, using the thin CA glue and accelerator on the little handle and drive it home and she's good. Again, back again with the wood bowl finish on the, uh, the very top, which I hadn't put on yet. Yeah, so uh, later on in the day now, so I'm just using the 4 steel wool to clean it off before we use the friction polish. All right, so it's time to finish the bottom. Again, using the vacuum chuck to do so. Yeah, you definitely want to be taking light cuts. You don't want to be too aggressive here because you can pull it off the, uh, off the vacuum chuck, but it's got uh, almost 25 inches of vacuum, so it's pretty tough to do so. Well, that's it. We're all done. Uh, making these little boxes can be quite a complex um, job to do. It's not just like making a, a normal bowl. Anyway, I'll bring you in for a last look. Now, I don't know if you've noticed the video quality is probably better. And that's because I'm shooting on a, on a new camera. 5100 Sony. Certainly, um, the GoPro certainly has its place. But the, um, the real fine detail that this picks up is something else. And again, there's under our lid. The bottom of the bottom of the lid's probably the nicest piece of wood that there is. Inside of the bowl, dish, box, whatever you want to call it. And of course, all the details on the bottom. Soapstone inlays. So this happened to be five inches tall by five and a half inches across. Um, yeah, you won't hear very many wood turners say that the best tree that they've ever had is a poplar tree. But in my case, that's where this came from. This tree was in my area here and it was being taken down and it was five feet in diameter. It was absolutely massive on the butt end of it. And I almost passed on it when I found out what it was, but it had large limbs on it and where one limb would stop on one side the other one would begin and the whole tree was full of pieces like this with this kind of crotch crane just amazing stuff and i'm so glad that i didn't pass on it unfortunately i didn't have a corn rig and i had a smaller lathe at the time uh but still that one tree i think it produced almost 300 bowls so you know you would have been i probably would have gotten almost 900 bowls out of that one tree that would give you an idea of how big this tree was it was back brick and labor and, and, and thanks to my friend Brent helped me get it out. Uh, but it took a number of trips, but we got it out. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think about this. Uh, this is my first adventure with abrasive paste. Uh, you've never seen me use a friction polish before. I typically only use it on smaller stuff. 
um, like on bottle stoppers and any smaller items like that. And so that's new to the channel. And again, I really think that, you know, the wood bowl finish is a, is a great finish, but in this case, this would be a lot more yellowy if we had to just put four, probably, I mean, it probably would take about four coats of finish on that. So, you know what, I think that uh, doing the sanding sealer, the abrasive paste, uh, and then the finish certainly uh, is good in that regard. So anyway, let me know what you think about that. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Could have been a fancier top for sure. Uh, if I had to redo this, I would probably make this a little skinnier. Um, but you know what, it's, it's good. I don't want to take away from the wood. That's one thing and it kind of mimics the same lines. So there's that. Um, we are finally over 14,000 subscribers, so thank you so much. I think we're, at, uh, we're probably around uh, 14,200. And again, this is the 15,000 subscriber giveaway bowl. You just have to subscribe to my channel, and that's Walnut with Muscle Shells and Copper Pipe. And I will pick a, I'll draw a name, and uh, we will ship this worldwide to the winner. So that's it. Uh, don't forget about Starbond and Sandpaper.ca. Links in the description below for 10% off your next order. Just use code InlayGym, and along with all the other links to Amazon and all the other stuff that I use in here. So anyway, hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm not sure what we'll be back with next week. Um, I'd like to maybe try and do another resin thing, but we'll see how that goes. But anyway, take care, stay safe, and we'll see you next week. Um, I noticed a lot of you haven't uh, notified, get the bell notification. So make sure you turn that on, that way you'll know, be notified when a video goes up. Anyway, we'll see you next week.